probably the most used homology modeling program today is, is a program by, developed by Andrew Charlie, who is called Modeler. And it uses study different techniques. He actually doesn't divide the, 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 the uh, modeling parts into parts. He actually tries to model everything at once. So what it does is that it takes the template and target, and then it extracts all the information from these to generate uh, uh, set of constraints. It basically tells you that these two residues or these two atoms are, are have this probability to be on this distance. So they get a lot of constraints from these templates, targets, from these alignments. And then it uses an annealing algorithm to, to satisfy, to make a model that satisfies all these constraints. So, uh, and you also add constraints from like the known from the chemistry. So you want to have the bond angles, bond length, fun of also overlaps, etc. Things like that. And the result is that most times you get very nice models. Sometimes you don't converge. The constraints don't really make sense, and you end up with something that's just extended. So sometimes you need to run it several times. But in general, you make very good models. However, maybe the side chains are not perfect optimized because it doesn't really copy the side chains from template, which is a good idea to do if you can, because that's most likely to be correct. And uh, so you make the alignment. A good thing here is actually because you use this constraint, you can easily use multiple sequence alignments. You can also use several templates, and you can even weight them in different ways, etc. And you can play around with that. So that's really quite useful. And, and, and assuming that you, for instance, have two templates, and they one and uh, one pair residues, in one case they are 70 angstrom away, in one case 23. Then you, would have, you realize, of course, the best way to model this is not to have it in between or, or 20. It's actually that it's probably 50% chance to be 17 and 50% chance to be 23, 24. So you're going to model it uh, with some Gaussian distribution that looks like that. So you're going to make all these constraints. This going to be constraints from one pair of alpha distances. But you have all other pairs also and many other constraints. And uh, you use uh, a minimization method. And uh, that you do an annealing that is similar to what is used in other programs, and the force field to add uh, to, to generate a model that satisfies all the spatial constraints. And you see that, of course, as in other model method methods, the highest extent to have the better is the model. And this is just another set of examples. And basically, uh, the better, higher sequence identity have, the more things can you do with. So if you want to study catalytic mechanisms, you probably need 100% sequence identity. If you just want to find the overall shape of protein, you probably can manage with 20% or even less.